I think Wargaming have made one of the biggest mistakes they could have possibly made within World of Tanks, and that's introducing an extremely, in my opinion, overpowered premium tank. And of course, we are looking at the SU-152 Taran, the Cold War tank that has now been introduced into World War II. And it has 950 alpha reloads in just under 14 seconds and is basically a mobile SU-130 PM at tier 10, which we already know was super broken down at tier 8 when it was first introduced. In fact, this one's probably better tier for tier, which shows you something about how good this tank is, and especially when it doesn't really get any negatives. It doesn't have armor, but then again, how many tier 10 tank destroyers really do actually get armor within the game? I'm going to showcase a couple of replays. They're not super high focused ones, so this was just me kind of casually playing it in the evening, not really trying to sweat it out or get like a 9k damage game, but it was so easy to rack up damage in this tank that, in my personal opinion, Wargaming are just... I don't know if they're trying to money grab by being like, this is a broken premium that you can pay £100 for, or whether they're just trying to kind of release premiums that they don't have to work on because ultimately it's a bit of a lazy design it's a tank that, that is already in the game it's in the cold war mode and essentially they've just kind of ported it over to the world war 2 mode giving it a couple of different changes and been like yeah it's absolutely fine to do 900 damage well 950 average damage per shot in 14 seconds and yeah you might be thinking hang on a minute doesn't the sturm tiger get like 1400 hit points or like 2000 or something like that if it pens yeah it does but this tank has 300 standard pen which means that you're not bouncing at all unlike the sturm tiger or any of those other tank destroyers it's like having a yeager that's mobile and can actually fire at loads of different things it is genuinely a more overpowered version of the su-130 pm in my opinion of course you can have your own opinions and i want to see them in the comment section down below do you think this is actually as overpowered as i'm kind of making out and just from a couple of games without really actually fully like understanding how to play the tank entirely i was able to easily do a 4k a game every single game almost um and that is really where i think that this tank makes it so easy for the majority of players and that's why i think that they've just entirely got it wrong and why i want to see this tank nerfed or at least you know I just hate the fact that they're trying to sell this. It's blatantly very, very good, if not borderline super overpowered in the game and de definitely detrimental to the playstyle in World War II because essentially you're able to do 950 damage very consistently. You only have to fire four shots within a minute to be able to rack up just under 4,000 damage. And in fact, when you've got all of the perks, which include um, the rapid loading perks, which decreases the reload by 10 and then you combine that with the fact that you can put on a gun rammer you then put on vents which also increases uh, your reload or decreases your reload and increases your dpm you can actually get this tank to over 4000 dpm and remember as i always say on world of tanks console and pc whatever you play the higher the alpha damage the more effective your dpm is because you when you're firing at someone you can fire and pen usually because it's a tank destroyer it has better penetration so you're not really bouncing and also you don't have to poke and you don't have to get every single shot on target or as many shots on target every single time and pen to be able to get the dpm that you need so effectively what i mean is you can deal four shots of damage as opposed to having to deal like 15 shots of damage to do the exact exact same amount of total damage and therefore your effective dpm as long as you can aim okay is much better with this tank than it would be if maybe you were kind of average at aiming and you would miss a shot every other or whatever it might be so i really do think that this tank when played correctly really good accuracy as well it's not like it gets terrible accuracy on the move the dispersion is a little bit painful whereby i mean like when you're moving around you can see the reticle kind of blooming out quite a bit and you have to aim a little bit once you've kind of got past that initial stage of of moving and then you have to then stop and then you aim in a little bit but even then it's nowhere near bad enough to kind of make it horrible to play and when you compare this to something like an object 268 which reloads in the exact same time but does 100 damage less doesn't have a turret and yeah i just think that this tank is way way better than that tank and 
I love the Object 268. You compare it to an Object 268 version 4, this tank is literally almost identical in terms of like the armor model, you're probably not going to bounce regardless of which tank you pick. This one gets an extra 100 alpha, it reloads in pretty much the exact same time if not less and yeah you get better camo, better view range. This tank is just despicable to be honest with you. I really do think that Wargaming completely got this wrong and I don't want to be seeing any more tanks like this. I thought with the introduction of the Object 279E on PC they would have got the idea that introducing broken tier 10 premium tanks is obviously a very bad idea. It inspires people spending vast amounts of money on the game which Wargaming obviously want but yeah, it's very transparent that Wargaming knew exactly what they were doing when introducing this tank. Obviously, either way, whether they knew that that would drive a load of money and sales, or whether they just thought, yeah, this is absolutely fine, which is probably a bigger problem because they basically saying that they don't actually know how to balance the game at all, which we probably already know. And so, yeah, I really do deplore the fact that they are introducing these such a broken tank at least make it super inaccurate or some reason why this tank is uh, not particularly very uh, easy to dish out lots of damage which it can do right now 0.37 accuracy base it has and that can go down to like 0.3 accuracy with all of the accuracy buffs that you can put on the tank which mean that yeah this tank is like a, playing a medium tank with bad accuracy like a bad accuracy medium tank which is saying something like you're not really going to miss with this tank unless you yourself are firing before you're fully aimed or potentially you know if you're swinging around or you're not fully aiming or directing your shot in the right direction so yeah this is why I think that this tank is just disgusting we've only put in literally three shots it's not taken any brain power to play which I think is really really dangerous and the amount of toxic tanks that Wargaming are kind of bringing in you're thinking about the 279Es you know, you're thinking about this tank, you're also thinking about the Stern Panzer, where it's literally just like hit and hope and just, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to pen for 2000 damage. It's kind of those sort of tanks which really hinder the game. I mean, to a degree, even things like the Type 5 Heavy, where you're kind of <laughs> like hoping that you can pen or maybe you're just derping people continuously, auto aiming, that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's kind of happening more and more on World of Tanks, and I really don't like it the fact that wargaming is shifting towards this sort of model of creating these tanks within the game and hopefully it stops <laughs> probably won't but i think it's really kind of a time to highlight the fact that this is not a balanced tank in any regard i don't know how it managed to get through some of the super tests am i saying that this is the most broken tank that wargaming have ever created probably not but the fact that it is probably in the top 10 list or top I don't even know, it might even be top 5 in my personal opinion. Granted I have only played about 10 games, but I know that this tank is very very good. I can see it coming, I've played plenty of games, I've spent thousand, probably a, a couple thousand of hours actually on the game itself, and so I would probably have a very good idea of knowing that this is not a not a balanced tank in any regard um i think purely just down to the amount of damage it can deal and also the fact that you can size great round things pump your damage and then like bugger off at like 60 kilometers an hour like yeah this is just a, a very very strange and interesting thing that Wargaming decided was okay within the game. I'm not at all condoning what they do. Um, obviously if you want to purchase a broken tank then you can but it will cost you £100 so yeah typical £100 and you can have a broken tank or yeah <laughs> like oh god. Anyway I don't want to ramble too much in this video. Of course if you have your own opinions about the SU-152 Taran or the laziness of Wargaming to reintroduce this tank as a premium that you have to pay £100 for or you could play Cold War and get it for free then yeah Put that all in the comment section down below. I want to use this video as a focal point for our views on the SU-152 Taran and how like just blatantly disgusting this tank is within the game, at least in my personal opinion. Maybe I'm wrong and I'm the only one that's managing to kind of 
deal so much damage so consistently and thinking that this is broken that may be the case but yeah just let me know tell me what you feel like and of course i'm pretty sure i'm somewhere in the right ballpark thinking that this is just way too strong for the game hopefully you enjoyed this video of course if you want to check out any of the update news that came out with this tank itself then check out this video on screen i really do hope that you do because that will kind of keep you informed of all of the extras that came along with this tank itself uh, and of course if you want to check out gameplay and tank reviews they should be on the right of the screen right now as well so thank you very much for watching hope you did enjoy the video and i hope you join me in the next one goodbye